This semester, I'm going to teach uh, design and evaluation part, and uh, especially I'm focused on the evaluation, why Anthony focused on the design part. So uh, because this is the uh, first lecture, I'm going to uh, quickly look through the introduction about the HCI and the uh, evaluation, okay? So uh, every Wednesday, uh, same time, I will teach the evaluation part. And then uh, the assessment will be a 50% for assignment and a 50% for project report. For the assignment, maybe uh, we will have uh, some piece and uh, presentation and the report. And uh, I didn't decide, I haven't decided yet for the project report, but maybe you will have uh, some mini project and then you will report your evaluation work on it, okay? So during this semester, I'm going to talk about the HCI and the evaluation, and then we will talk about uh, some human factors, the human factors, because uh, we receive so many information through our eyes, and then we listen the, the auditory one, and we smell, and then testing, and then even we uh, touch and feel something tactile feedback. So understanding the human factor is a really important one. Even though we are not talk about the deeply for that, but we will understand the overview of the human factor. So you will, uh, when you're doing your own thesis on your research, then you will consider about the human perception and the cognition and the human thinking, how our brain works, okay? And then we will talk about the, some user studies. So through the user study, we will learn about the the concept of uh, evaluation and uh, how we can gather in the data collection and uh, how we work with the human subject. Actually, human subject is uh, very complicated. So is there any, anyone who worked with a uh, human subject for your own research or something, just a testing or something else? Oh, I'm on a, I have a brain in the back of the week. So. Okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. That is a very complicated, you know, right? Yeah, because we have a all different background and then our uh, physical perspective, our height, our weight, and our ability, our experience is uh, all different. And uh, sometimes it is very effective uh, according to your, where you live and uh, how you uh, receive the something. And then our experience uh, regarding some using the devices or regarding some using the software, all different. So it is a very complicated one. However, uh, in heat lab and then for your thesis, you will someday we work with a human subject. So we should understand and we should learn how we can react, how we can work with a human subject, which is a really important um, thing. And then we will talk about the user study methods like uh, observation, ethnograph, uh, case studies, interview, survey, questionnaire, usability, and experimental study. Uh, even though we are not a uh, statistician, so we are not deeply looking at the math behind of uh, statistics, but we will learn about uh, what statistics will be used on my thesis, on my, as, our, as our own tool. So we will talk about the ANOVA, MANOVA, or a t-test, and what is the p-value, what is the f-value. So we will talk about that one. And then maybe my guess is uh, I will give us some quiz uh, why we working on the, some statistics, okay? Um, most of the uh, materials in my slide uh, were made based on the, this book, so I highly recommend you read all of them, but if you don't have uh, much time, um, I recommend you to read uh, this one first, and this one first, and then this one. But if you don't have uh, much time, <laughs> again, then read those two guys, okay? Yeah. I think this is a really good time to introduce our staff, including our academic background so we can know each other, and then maybe I can also have uh, some cues to understand you guys, and then uh, talk about the one thing you hope to get out of this class. So, start myself. 
Uh, my name is Song Choi Jung. I'm from South Korea, and uh, I went to United States, and uh, I came to Hitler as a postdoc. I joined here uh, last year, and then um, I worked on the virtual reality and the mixed reality and the human computer interactive stuff. And my department uh, was uh, computer science, so maybe I can call myself computer scientist. And the skills, uh, I have experience to handle Unity uh, because Unity is uh, worked with uh, a C sharp or JavaScript, so I have uh, experience on it. And then my previous background was uh, computer graphics uh, using OpenGL, so. I have uh, some experience with uh, C++ and uh, OpenGL, and then uh, maybe Python, and a little bit R, and then um, Matlab. Uh, actually, there is a nice software to handle the statistics, but some students uh, may, if they want to find uh, some uh, free software, then R will be the, the best option, I guess, but sometimes, we also need to have implement some uh, gen, uh, public software when we design our product and uh, evaluation. So my choice, my my choice was um, Python. So that depends on your situation. So I'm not pushing you guys to use a Python, but anyway, I uh, twist a little bit Python. And uh, my statistics level is, uh, I'm not a statistician, so my level is not so much <laughs> those guys, but uh, I adopted some statistic tool on my publication and uh, published to the world, so maybe my statistic level is a reasonable level to the world. <laughs> okay, so one thing I hope to get out of this class is uh, I really want to uh, well deliver my knowledge to you guys. I really help you guys to uh, come up to overcome your master challenging. So uh, that is really what I want to. Okay. Hi, I'm Laura Gray, the Assistant Senior Manager. Um, I just finished my bachelor's degree at Church Water in Washington in industrial design. Um, I don't really have much programming skills, but I'm doing a course in Python at That's great. Um, I've done some stuff in the script, but I'm not okay with that. And I guess it would be interesting to use both those skills together. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Ashok. I'm from India. Uh, so my background is in design, so I did a master's in industrial design. So I've worked for two years as a user experience designer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I post a lot of skills. I can learn the statistics part of it. Sure. That's great. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Jin Park. I'm from Sweden. Um, I have my degree, I have a degree in psychology and I do the public language and tokenomics and PRE. And then what I would like to learn in this semester is um, using VR and AR technologies to design learning experiences and the learning experiences as well. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, nice plan, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Alexandra. Uh, I have a management background. I specialize in marketing. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. So it seems like actually last time I, I read that, the post-it, and then I found that some of you guys have a little bit, <laughs> yeah, just a little bit <laughs> fear about the programming languages, so that's fine. So uh, that is a just depend on your research topic and then research area. So some, maybe some of you guys want to know more about the program language or have to know about the program language. But there is a really nice guys and the great guys regarding the uh, program language, especially Adrian. He's a really great for doing this one. And the many PhD students uh, will be, uh, hopefully will be assigned to you guys. So they will help you to encourage me and then help to actually your program thing. So don't worry too much, okay? <coughs> All right, uh, so let's talk about the, the evaluation. Evaluation is a uh, uh, quite important one. Uh, last time I, okay, here's that. Uh, you know that these guys, uh, I'm not only talking about the IT devices. Evaluation will be applied to all of the product, all of the design. But I just want to say about these guys, the Apple uh, AR Kit, Google AR Core, uh, Oculus Go, Magic Lab, and uh, Samsung AR Emoji, this software or this product was invented actually recently. So even though they, when they created those um, product and uh, those software, they intended something, right? So you know what is the, the Magic Lab? The, the goggle? Yeah, that is uh, just AR, AR devices. When you wear the, the goggle, then you can see virtual object overlaying onto the real world. So that is uh, their purpose. But actually, even though that is a one of our latest goggle, but still it has uh, something uh, flows, like uh, the field of view, the, the field of view, the, the range where we can see the outside is uh, still very narrow. So which is uh, one of a major flow for that one. And the Apple AR kit, it also still has a problem. And the emoji looks like uh, really good. I'm, I don't think so, I'm not sure. <laughs> so all, all devices has a flow. And then they, uh, in their company side, they always doing the testing and testing and testing evaluation. So uh, when we create something new device or software, whatever new product, 
we are always concerned about the evaluation. So I will talk about the, the cost-wise later. The evaluation, when we do the evaluation, is uh, sensitively related to the money and time. So uh, even though the AR, this is the, so many companies worked on the AR and VR part. I'm not talking about the only the AR VR part. This is the only the very small portion of the world industry. But I just want to see that one. Many companies are working on the AR VR part, even though there is a very small part, and they are doing lots of uh, evaluation, lots of uh, testing themselves. Because without the evaluation, actually the meaning is uh, nothing, right? So there is a reason why we want to focus on the evaluation. And then even though Anthony talked to you guys about the, the, the overview of the HCI, I just want to remind you again. Uh, the major thing about the HCI is the HCI is an interdisciplinary area, which means many different background people come to the HCI. I'd be surprised, you guys, yes, always we have a really big uh, different background, we have it. When you go to the conference, then I met really different guys. Even though we are focusing on the introduce our HCR research, our, our product, uh, our approach was very different because uh, some guys has a uh, art and some guys has a uh, mechanic, some guys has a uh, computer science, uh, science background, and some guys have uh, even education. Our perspective is very different depending on our discipline, oh, so which means our communication is really important when you talk to each other. Uh, when we go to the IEEE-VR, which is one of the major uh, VR conference, or when you go to the CHI, one of the major HCI conference, uh, or VR Active, which is also one of the major uh, virtual reality conference, when you go to there, uh, there is not a uh, computer scientist, uh, uh, mechanical engineers, and then designers, and then psychologists, and then edu uh, education people, we all gather there. And then we, uh, we talk uh, same thing, but with a different perspective on the same topic. So which is a really interesting one, but very sensitive one. So uh, each discipline has a, their own tradition of their method, uh, which means uh, interdisciplinary research area is, uh, looks uh, very attractive, but very challenging. Uh, maybe we can apply the different methods. Some people uh, sh want to have a lab-based study. Uh, versus some people want to have an ethnography, like a field study in the wild. And then some people maybe want to focus on the completion time, which is a uh, numerical way. But some people may want to focus on the very subjective one. How do you feel? Was it good? Was it bad? But there is uh, no rational yet. And then some people want to focus on the uh, theory base. But some area doesn't have a theory, doesn't have a well-developed theory well uh, yet. For the reason, they want to focus on the practical way first, and then all the practical uh, work will be added on it and added on it. Some people want to do this way. And then, do you have uh, some knowledge about the journal and the conference paper? Okay. Uh, there is uh, one way, uh, because we want to be a researcher, right? And then finally, the researcher will be assessed uh, by their paper. So at least you will have uh, your own thesis uh, from the University of Canterbury, right? But the other way to communicate with the other researcher is uh, always a paper. So there is a two way, journal paper and the conference paper. But journal and the conference has a bit different feature. The biggest uh, difference was the reviewing cycle. The journal takes a very long time, actually. Otherwise, conference, because conference will be held annually, so the review cycle is relatively short 
contest the journal. So the feature is a bit uh, different. And then depend on the department. As far as I know, uh, education people or psychology people uh, prefer to publish their, uh, their publication to the journal. Otherwise, uh, on the other hand, the computer scientists want to publish their, uh, their paper to the conference. Uh, my guess is uh, because the computer uh, science area, computer technology changing very rapidly for the reason at the conference site, uh, computer scientists want to discuss each other and then discuss each other the, for the next idea and then they maybe get some result on their mind. So for the reason some, uh, com in the department of uh, computer science, they regard the high conference paper uh, can be regarded as high, conf high uh, level of journal. So that is a bit different tradition. So actually the fact is uh, that is true even if all disciplines call themselves as their uh, HCI researcher. So design people absolutely call them HCI researcher and uh, some engineering people call them as a HCI researcher, education people as well, or is it true? So triangulation is really important. Do you know what is the triangulation? The triangulation is a, uh, HCI is a bit sensitive to the uh, human subject. So, uh, and our background is very different. So our approach could be different for the one party. So if we come up with the same result, uh, you come up with this, uh, one result with your own method, and you come up with the same result with different method, and you come up with the same, uh, you come up with the same result but different method, then we can say that, okay, we can verify the, re the result can be uh, proved. This is a triangulation, so which is really important for us, okay? So communication is uh, really important. The first thing is that you have to understand uh, your own research method in your area first, and you should understand the research method in other disciplines area. The reason is uh, when you talk uh, each other at the conference or any other area, then we should understand, after you, we understand their research method, then maybe we can aware of the sensitive part of their research method. Maybe some design people could uh, focus on its beauty or its, uh, uh, how colorfully it represented. Uh, on the other hand, maybe engineer people just want to focus on the time consuming or was it fast, was it slow, was it uh, good enough to control something else, the numerical way. So we have to uh, understand each other and uh, talk uh, with a good manner. Unless that is a very rude and uh, unless uh, you will, it is very hard to find a good research, okay? Uh, so you need to communicate your research in a way that other can understand. Also, uh, you should prepare something like a discussion. Why did you use method X instead of method Y or Z. When you go to the conference, uh, normally we will have a, about 20 minutes to 30 minutes for your presentation, including Q&A session. And then during the Q&A session, maybe this is the most frequently asked question. Why did you use that ANOVA rather than t-test? Why did you use that MANOVA rather than non-parametric method? So you should prepare. Why, why you choose that method with a good rationale, okay? So uh, last Monday, we have seen uh, this diagram, uh, and then I want to remind you this diagram again. Uh, once you decide that some, your research topic, and maybe you will need to identify some problem or requirement or something factor which can be improved the certain performance, even though we don't know yet. After that, after you think about it, maybe you will start designing yourself with your pen and then paper and do some 
study design, or design the, its structure, something else. After that, you will start doing on your implementation. Because uh, um, research-wise, maybe some implementation does not have to be perfect. There is no perfect solution, right? So maybe you can just uh, quickly prototype in the implementing some devices, or even though some function does not work correctly, maybe sometimes it does not matter. If you just uh, focus on your best uh, research topic, research question. After that, absolutely, we will do a evaluation. After you find uh, some feedback from your evaluation, if you uh, satisfy your research, then maybe you can just uh, finish it. But most of the time, we may return to the identify the, the research question again, and then uh, or redesign or implementing the prototype, so which is really important one. Once you done, once you done like a, a paper wise, once you completed your paper to the journal whatever conference, then maybe at the end you will reflect yourself, make uh, some conclusion discussion, and then you can get some next letter, the future direction. So uh, when we doing the evaluation, we should think about the, so what will be evaluated and what will be the, our expected outcome and why we doing the evaluation at this time and then who will evaluate or who will be evaluated and when the time and the location and then so how. So the first part of the evaluation is um, how we can effectively collect the data. So if we uh, think about it, if we want to evaluate a human gesture in virtual reality or just in, uh, in a class in reality, then how we can, uh, we, if we want to focus on the, we want to make uh, some taxonomy about the gesture for the teacher in a school. So let's say this is a kind of a, a negative one or something uh, feeling considering or thinking. Otherwise, this kind of a gesture is a bit open. So maybe I'm um, positive or maybe encouraging some students, something like this gesture is a very interesting topic in your mind. In the case, how we can gather their data using the video recording which is good, maybe taking photo, which is good. Um, maybe we can act, uh, have an interview with a teacher about their gesture, but somehow that is an inefficient way, my guess. So how we can, we can gather in the data is a really important one for the evaluation. So uh, we will evaluate the quality of the design or product in terms of user performance, usability, user experience, and so forth. So maybe we, uh, from the uh, evaluation, we can expect the outcome, like um, how, uh, how, uh, how was it worked, uh, how much about the efficiency, and was it easy, was it fast, was it slow, or did you find uh, some notable things? Uh, whatever it is a negative one, whatever it is a positive one, uh, does the user like the product? So this will be the, our expected outcomes from the evaluation. And the other uh, good thing from the evaluation is uh, actually evaluation is not uh, end point, right? So that is the iteration. So once we do doing the evaluation, you will get some feedback from the uh, participants or from the, the data. So you can get some, uh, some important feature from the evaluation. Then uh, the, for using the evaluated data, we can continue to investigate the, the future work. So this is a, uh, seems like a very uh, easy one to understand. But when we actually doing our own research, this is always some of the missing part. So we should consider about the, what is the evaluation and what is the purpose of the evaluation. 
even though you uh, submit your paper and uh, accept it to the uh, top conference, but still evaluation should be conducted. Okay. So why? Uh, absolutely, uh, to validate our prototype and the solution against the goal, our requirement, and the, our problem statement. And then we want to refine our product uh, prototype and the design again and again. And then uh, again, we have to get lesson uh, about the user and the problem by evaluate uh, with a good rationale. Uh, for the product design. The timing is a very important and uh, interesting factor. I'm not sure who said uh, this wording, but you can fix it now on the drafting board with the easier, or you can fix it later on the construction site with a sledgehammer. Yeah, easy to understand, right? So, when you doing the your evaluation is very sensible, sensibly related to your money and your time and your effort. Uh, there's a interesting uh, stories in South Korea. Uh, 1990, uh, the Samsung, the company, uh, developed the, the cell phone like that, that one. It called the S8 3000. And then it was awful because um, the major flu was it does not work. So that was a flu. So the president, <coughs> president uh, asked to their staff gathering all the, uh, all the devices on the ground and he threw the fire and he just burnt it. And he said that, okay, this is our lesson and we never do that, this one. After then, after then, uh, their next version, next generation cell phone was uh, very uh, popular in South Korea. I'm not sure what, what about the <laughs> to worldwide. Anyway, during the time they waste this much money, we guess their evaluation was not so good. And then their time to doing the evaluation was too late. So this much money, uh, 1990, <laughs> 1990, 1990. So that was a very interesting uh, history. So when we doing the, uh, the once the product has been developed, the, then the advantage of the thing is uh, rap we can do the rapid development and then the evaluation cost will be small, but uh, it will have a higher risk and then higher cost for rectifying the, uh, the problems like that the history. Uh, Otherwise, uh, when you're doing, uh, doing the design and the experiment, the advantage of that one is uh, we can find and rectify the problem more earlier, but uh, it still also has a higher portion of the cost into the evaluation. So that is a um, very um, trade-off relationship. So we should uh, carefully choose how much and how many times and when we will doing the, our evaluation because um, uh, your master period is about one year, right? Even though there is uh, some extension, we, maybe you will think about, it, okay, I will complete my master during one year, right? Then you should carefully think about it when I was doing my evaluation. So maybe sometimes I will talk later, but sometimes you can ask your friend, can you just test it? I don't, I don't need uh, numerical data, just uh, want to know your feeling, so which is good. But when you do, uh, when you, the time comes up for your graduation, you have to do very serious evaluation. So during the time, you should prepare very well based on your uh, pilot study, based on your um, the pre-conducted study data to keep your time, keep your uh, money, keep your effort. So, there is a three type of a, uh, testing, not a method, we just uh, defined this one in terms of its time. So there is a three type of a, 
uh, testing, the formative testing, summative testing, and the validation testing. Uh, let me check it out. Okay, uh, the formative testing is uh, uh, we can do, if we doing the evaluation very early stages, then we can say that that is uh, the formative testing. Sometimes we can call it uh, pilot testing. Because uh, uh, the formative testing uh, somehow uh, does not require to complete the prototype or completed uh, evaluation technique so its fidelity could be very low. However, we can still get nice feedback. So for example, when you just develop your, uh, your software or you design something, and then you can ask your friend and then uh, listen what is his feedback regarding this product. That is not objective one, that is a very subjective one. But somehow, if we listen same things from from him and the same things from him and same things from him, triangulation. So maybe we can think about it. Okay, maybe I should uh, revise this portion, this part. So I like that formative study. So mm, one of uh, our master student, uh, the student working on the cyber security in virtual reality, and then it takes a little bit time, but uh, very carefully uh, designed the, the student study. And the student, uh, I believe, took uh, several times with uh, testing with other students. And then after that, uh, the student is ready to run uh, the student's actual study um, in the future, not so much, uh, not so long future, uh, maybe within this month. So based on the several times the student conducted uh, kind of a, this formative study, and then uh, get some good results, and based on the results, uh, decided to run actual study. This is the uh, reality, okay? Uh, okay, let's say that in the low, when we are developing the low fidelity prototype, um, some uh, researcher says that result of all the testing. Uh, this is a, this one, I will show you. Can you see it? No? Okay. One second. No? Okay, <laughs> uh, actually the virtual character is uh, talking like a human. And then this study, uh, the human subject uh, having some game with the virtual human, and the, like a question game, and the guessing what, finally. This is the simple game. And the virtual character talking like a real human. And then the subject, so the subject very naturally talk with, with the virtual human. Sometimes the virtual human react like a real human like that. It seems like uh, the virtual human has uh, artificial intelligence, but actually not. Uh, behind the, the screen, there is a human being, and the human being just controlling the, the virtual human, what they say and what they behavior, pressing the button like that, this one. So this code wizard of all the method. The reason is uh, uh, if we focus on the how the real human react a virtual human, if this is the, our focus, then actually the artificial intelligence is not our matter. So if, if we just intended the virtual human has the artificial intelligence, that's fine. So for your prototype, this kind of, a, maybe this is a, seems like a hack, but it doesn't matter, that's okay. If you just focus on your research topic, somehow we can adopt this kind of a stuff for your formative study or a bit serious study, like a semester one or validation study, that's fine. Yes. 
be looking. Okay, so uh, summative testing is a uh, bit more serious rather than formative testing. Uh, it takes a place uh, when a more formal, so which means high fidelity prototype is ready. So when you, based on your data from the uh, formative study, maybe you will design your next level more seriously. We can call it uh, summative testing. Also, the validation testing has the uh, same uh, same level. So maybe my guess is that during your master, you will have a uh, many time for the formatting formative testing, and then finally you will get one or at least two. Uh, summative testing for your thesis, for your research topic. Yep, uh, validation testing, the solution is uh, compared to set of benchmark or product goal, uh, project goal or other solutions. So actually in the validation testing, you will compare with your research with uh, some of uh, benchmark research, which already, already relates to the work or relates to the, your uh, research area in the community. Uh, this is a one of the interesting example, <laughs> which is uh, from mine. Uh, this test was um, in virtual reality when human has a, because of, uh, the size measuring is a quite important one in reality, in the industry or design part or uh, education maybe. So when you see the, some object, maybe in, in our mind, we can measure its size, right? So uh, this study comes from how we can measure the virtual object in virtual reality when we have uh, our own hand uh, versus virtual hand. That is uh, just a topic, so that's fine. Uh, when we designed this study first, uh, actually we want to provide in multiple number of uh, 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 boxes to the participant. The box size uh, was a very uh, different. So we want to uh, ask the participant, when you see some size of a virtual object, just uh, tell us what was the size. But uh, once we do some uh, multiple time of a formative study, we found that that was not efficient to measure uh, the participant perception regarding the the virtual object size. Rather than if we ask the participant to control the each size using the controller on your their uh, left hand, then it could be work uh, more efficiently to measure the virtual object size. So we just uh, change it based on the research from the formative study. For the reason, finally, we get a really good uh, uh, research. Uh, re uh, what I'm saying is a meaningful research, uh, then this uh, research uh, has been published to the conference. So this is uh, just one of example why we doing uh, the evaluation and uh, sometimes we doing the evaluation uh, earlier part, earlier, earlier time on your uh, research work and then finally we will get the serious uh, evaluation uh, at end of your, your master, master degree. Okay, so who uh, will be the designer? Absolutely, you guys will be the designer and you will work with your colleagues because you can uh, discuss each other somehow and then you can also uh, work with the uh, experts like uh, Rob Lindemann, Anthony Seed, and uh, Adrian and then Neil and the other uh, PhD students. And then maybe you will have uh, some chance to work with the uh, stakeholders and always you will work with the uh, users. And just keep in mind, uh, somehow we can think about it like that. Okay, uh, the result is bad because the user was bad. The user doesn't understand, didn't understand what I'm saying, didn't understand my software, didn't understand my design, didn't understand you're wrong, okay? <laughs> we are wrong. Always the user is correct. We should think about it. You just feedback is the correct one. If they didn't, uh, if they don't understand uh, how um, manipulate, how control the system, that is our fault, okay? So think about it. 
user is always uh, correct, I'm always wrong. Not always wrong, sometimes wrong, okay? Because the user, users are not uh, developer, designer, they are just a consumer, okay? So the location is a uh, kind of a sensitive thing. Um, we can conduct our research depend on your research topic in the field or in the laboratory, uh, or we can also conduct our evaluation remotely, sending the emails or sending uh, surveys, questionnaire, or we can use a, a, even use a, a video conference call, something like that. Everyone, every every stuff has a, its a disadvantage and advantage, but the important thing is uh, that is a based on, depend on your research topic. So in the field, uh, the field study is uh, quite wide uh, because the field study we can, we we can control everything, actually. And then we, can, we want to observe what is doing in reality with the natural setup, natural setting. So this is a um, bit different when we conduct our research in laboratory setting. Even though in the laboratory setting, we wanted to control everything. So which means we wanted to replicate the result every time uh, we want to have a same result every time if we perfectly control everything in laboratory. But in reality, it is not. Even though we can control uh, many things compared to the, the field study, but uh, even though we doing everything in laboratory, we can't control everything because there's always human being involved. And then always there is uh, some natural thing, like uh, lighting and uh, somehow unexpected noise and uh, somehow expected, uh, un unexpected event, uh, events always happen. So that is uh, very, uh, very hard to control everything. And then lastly, uh, we may want to check it out. So how, how we can uh, gather the data and then how we can evaluate actually. So maybe some people want to use a questionnaire, some people want to use the record the devices, video, photo, or tracking the data, uh, which what I'm saying is uh, tracking the, the body data. Uh, if we want to, to develop new locomotion technique in virtual reality, then maybe we want to uh, track uh, the actual movement like that. So maybe this kind of data can be used or maybe we can having some interview directly. So the method uh, is really important and we have to understand. And then there is many factors we should consider. That is, uh, we should, we always consider about the human subject and then our technology and then the context or scenario. Context and the scenario is really important because your research topic is, looks great. However, actually our contribution should be very small. So it is very hard to making um, really good, uh, good stuff and this stuff uh, can be used uh, in general, uh, in universal. There is actually, but, but actually there is no universal solution. It is very hard. If you invent something universal solution, maybe you will get prize, Nobel Prize or whatever and more than, more than it. So it is very hard. So our focus is a very small portion of the contribution in the field. For the reason when you're designing your study, you should think about it. What context will support my, my research? What scenario is, will support my development? So context and scenario is a really important one when you think about your, your real research. Actually, we will think about the method and techniques and then how much how you can interact with the user during the test, uh, how you observe, capture, and considering their feedback is always important. Okay, uh, 
I think maybe we can take a break 10 minutes and then let's resume. All right.
Okay, <coughs> all right, so please zoom. So uh, I'm going to talk about the evaluation approaches with these four categories again. So, okay, quick and dirty. So that is a very informal one. So maybe actually I also, this is a bit hard to distinguish exactly because uh, the definition about the research approach is uh, still uh, arguing. And then, but that is, uh, the impact is uh, not so significant. So whatever, sometimes uh, when you write in some paper, it is important to clearly mention we doing the some formative study or some validated study. Th that is important, but when you just say, okay, let's do pilot study or let's do the quick and dirty study, that's fine. So anyway, the quick and dirty is a very informal one. So when you just write, uh, design something on a paper, how, how do you think? This is just a quick and dirty, okay? So that is a just an easy one, mostly easy one, and most frequently we can test ourselves, myself, or just very quickly ask your friend, or while you're just developing something using the Arduino board, uh, as you will doing in three or three with Adrian, the, after you just uh, develop something on the Arduino board and just uh, ask your friend, that is just a quick and dirty. So uh, the focus is just a, a fast prototyping and the design process rather than carefully documenting the finding, just uh, asking some subjective feedback to, from your uh, friend or colleague or some expert. A field study is a bit different. Field study is uh, we going to the in the wild, and then we going to school, we going to some field, something industry area, and then we will find something, uh, something good to, which technology will help them, which design will help them. This is the purpose of the field study. So we want to identify the opportunity for new technology in the field whatever it is a school, whatever it is a university, uh, whatever it is a grocery shop or department, doesn't matter. And they determine the design requirement and decide how to introduce new technology uh, and we will evaluate technology in use. So this is a really good example. Uh, this is a, a research for the firefighters for their training. And the left side is a, uh, we doing the study in the real field with the expert. And then the right side is the, uh, the virtual, uh, virtual reality based simulation. And then one of our PhD students worked on this one. And then you can see the, the right side, the virtual reality simulator at the, the vision space. You know where it is? Yes. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yes. And have you tried it? Uh, okay. No, okay. No, no. Okay, great. Yeah, so the purpose of this study was because firefighters is a really important person in our society, but they are very uh, always confronted with a dangerous situation, so they wanted to have more training, but it is very hard to replicate the, the same training always. And then if they doing the, their training in real field, it is very uh, dangerous, and the cost is very high, and then their efforts should be uh, very painful. So for the reason, we wanted to develop the uh, virtual reality-based uh, uh, based firefighter simulator for their training. And then the key was then how much we can uh, simulate the level of stress. Because the firefighters ha having very uh, significant stress why they doing their actual job, even they doing their training. So the key was, if uh, does our uh, simulator can create same level of stress was our key. And then uh, why we testing with the uh, uh, real firefighters in real field, uh, actually everything was very different. When we want to, uh, during the time, we want to measure their physiological signals like a heart rate and the GSR, how much we can sweat from our fingers. 
uh, it can represent our stress level somehow. And then um, maybe what else? Uh, I just, yeah, I, I forgot the other physiological signals anyway. We want to measure all of them. But in the field, because every, every cell was very natural in the field, so we can, we can get everything uh, under our, our control. So that is the uh, reality when we doing the study, when we doing evaluation in the field. Uh, on the other hand, the advantage of that uh, study in the field was we can get real feedback from the real person, from the real professional in that field. For the reason, once we conducted this, um, this study, uh, actually the study design was not perfect. It can't be perfect because uh, there are so mu many, many variables was exist when we doing the study in real field. And then actually we were actually rode the helicopter and the helicopter is moving that is uncontrollable and there was a very big wind swing. So it was uh, very hard to get everything. However, the result come from real person in the real field. It was a very uh, fas uh, fascinating thing. And then we can, finally we can support uh, this uh, their training with our uh, simulator. And this result will be, uh, be present uh, at the coming IEEE VR conference in Osaka next, next month, so which was uh, very great. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the laboratory-based study is uh, we want to focus on control everything and we want to replicate same result every time. This is our hope. So mm, done in uh, interruption-free controlled lab and they used for evaluating the design or the implemented system. And then maybe we can accurately record some work situation. Also, uh, it is useful for comparing different design in a controlled context. Uh, traditional uh, Physicians uh, actually prefer this kind of uh, uh, method. Maybe Newton, their traditional Einstein, they all prefer this kind of uh, experiment because they want to know something universal result, something universal experiment. So they want to find something raw, right? Not just uh, something phenomenal. They want to find the raw. But in HCI, our situation is a bit different because we are working on with the human subject again. So totally controlled laboratory is not possible. Here is one example. Uh, one of our PhD students worked on uh, implementing this type of H, uh, H, uh, HMD. Uh, do you have an idea what is the HMD? Yep, yep, head mounted display. So for the virtual reality, uh, we want to dominate our eyes to the virtual context, right? So we can feel, we can experience the virtual reality. But the problem is, what happened? If we were in the virtual, the, the headset, then our eyes will be uh, isolated from outside of world. But while I'm doing the something and the react and the maybe doing game, my pet is coming. So somehow I can <laughs> kick it. So that will be happen. So this is the reason why we should have a something channel to interact, to communicate with the outside of the world, while we, even we doing the uh, virtual reality experience. For the reason, uh, the student wanted to put some uh, LCD glasses uh, near the uh, per per view here, the, and he implemented the LCDs to the around the headset. The, can you see that the yellow lines? Yep. And the the LCD is uh, we can control its transparency. So when we want to just focus on the uh, virtual context, then we just close the LCDs. Otherwise, if we wanted to interact with uh, like a, a graph 
the mock up and then shiva water, then we just open the, the ass disk. Also, we wanted to uh, get some frontal view, so we put the, uh, the fisheye lens in front of the HMD, so we can see the, uh, the front view as well. So the reason is again, we want to provide something channel, uh, uh, channel to communicate with the uh, real, real world while we stay in virtual world without uh, taking off the HMD. That was the uh, reason for this research. And he uh, conducted a study uh, with a real, uh, like a real office, office environment. So why the participant working on something in virtual reality, like a typing, then sometimes we send a uh, message, a text message. So he had uh, the, the participant have to react with the message, or uh, sometimes the participant has to grab a mock up and move to other place, something like that. For the re uh, at the time, the participant would press the some button, and then uh, sometimes the participant get. The, the camera image or open the uh, windows, uh, something else. And then that was our purpose. But the problem was, even though we wanted to control everything, actually he wanted to record the, the behavior using that, the camera here, but sometimes it doesn't work. Even though we intended everything and then because we manipulate everything using the computer, so it had to work, but it doesn't. Sometimes the lighting condition was not good, and sometimes just uh, other pa passenger just pass, pass along with um, this hole, so makes some noise. It doesn't. So even though we wanted to try to very controlled uh, study in a lab, but in reality it is not. So we should uh, carefully think about it. Many many variables when you're doing when you. A design and when you evaluate your own research. Uh, the other type of evaluation is a predictive evaluation. This is a very expert guys who can do that. We can't, okay? Because um, they, the expert guys, the, the professional researchers has uh, many, many background and many knowledges and uh, with a very strong theory. So based on the theory, they will evaluate. Actually, they can just uh, of kind of forecasting. They just assess without doing any actual study. So this is a really expert level, but there is a type of evaluation. So the key uh, feature of the predictive evaluation is that uh, the user needs not be present at the site the expert will expect it. Expert will forecast the results based on the theory, based on the other study case, based on their own cues. This is the one of the type of evaluation. So uh, this is uh, just a quick chart. Let's uh, see together. So the principle for quick and dirty was uh, quick and informal. And the uh, field study is a very naturalistic. And the last study is a controlled and uh, very structured. And the predictive one is the active driven uh, evaluation technique. Uh, the user's role was <coughs> for quick and dirty, uh, user's role is uh, just free. Uh, uh, the user just can give a freely give uh, their feedback to the experimenter, so which is a very easy one. And then user's role in field study is very natural. Uh, the users uh, sometimes doesn't need to be trained. Sometimes they just naturally react. If we focus on the teacher, then teacher doesn't have to be doing something um, intended behavior. It doesn't. Just doing naturally teach their students. Then we will gather the, uh, the data, we will collect the data, and we will evaluate, right? Uh, the, but in laboratory study, it is a bit different. The users will have a something specific task. Uh, for example, in here, we, send, we ask the participant to move a certain cup to the certain place and then and react uh, regarding the incoming call, like uh, say something or just follow the same instruction. 
and then here the this is a bit different example and this one the user have to measure in the its object size using the controllers it's a bigger smaller he have to control the its size so in the laboratory study the participants will do something specified specified task and for the predictive one there is a no rule for users and the location a uh, key and dirty you can do anytime even in toilet so anytime you can you can ask and then you can do in the quick and dirty and then a field study in a in a natural space and the lab study uh, very controlled the situation control the environment you will conduct the lab studies predictive one can be done anywhere as well and the, the time uh, quick and dirty is a quite formative one so we can understand what does it mean and the field study can be formative or validation that is a depend on our research party and the research direction so that is a depend on the situation lab study is a much more summative and the validation because for controlling everything we have to set up everything so it takes time and then sometimes it takes some money it takes a very big effort on it to control everything so have you been that the next room? Okay, so we usually learn uh, our own study uh, in the room because the room space is enough to run something virtual reality or something HCR related topic. Uh, but uh, when we doing, I think the last, uh, last part when you uh, develop your own product, your own design, when you using the computer, then maybe you will work on the uh, data logging system because we want to gather in data so when you're doing that job then you have to think about very carefully how we can uh, effectively and efficiently gather in the data and then during the time you will take uh, many many times to control everything at the room so we do uh, uh, the lab study is uh, m we can categorize it as a summative or validation testing and the predictive one also uh, summative and validation testing because uh, they will work on based on a given theory and the given their experience so uh, the study is very serious uh, the feedback from the users can be we can get qualitative uh, feedback for the quick and dirty and uh, also we can get some qualitative or I didn't mention it but we can also get quantitative data from the field study like uh, uh, video capturing Ab once we get the video capture and then if human subject analyze the, the video our bare, bare eye that is um, maybe probably subject to one but if we get some uh, software like a gesture analyzer just assume then maybe the gathered data is the uh, objective one quantitative one uh, and uh, from the lab study we can get uh, quantitative and either quantitative and qualitative data and also we can find uh, some problem because uh, we control the everything so maybe more objectively rather than field study we can get the feedback from them and then from the predictive uh, evaluation, we can find uh, some problem. So uh, we will not cover everything about the method in this lecture today, but we will have uh, some observation technique and the ethnographic case study technique, interview focus group, and the survey questionnaire usability testing, and the user experiment uh, in the coming uh, lecture we will cover everything but just think about it when you're going up to observation it seems more informal and then much uh, qualitative feedback will be given to the experiment but when you're going to down uh, to usability testing or user experiment then it looks much formal and we can get much quantitative feedback and then the type of a study could be 
systematic or validating testing. So survey questionnaire is uh, uh, located in the middle. So that is depend on how we can construct the survey, how we can construct a questionnaire, and how we can evaluate the, uh, the result from the survey and questionnaire. We can decide if that is a quantitative or qualitative. And the interesting thing is the answering. Uh, in virtual reality, there is a question called the presence. And the many, many uh, real researchers work with the presence questionnaire. He developed it. So <laughs> if you have some question when you're doing, uh, implementing your own question, maybe we have a really good resource. <laughs> So you can ask them. Okay, uh, so uh, from the evaluation, the research can be, uh, we can cluster in the feedback. So maybe we want to know, so what worked for uh, my design, my product from my evaluation, and uh, what could be improved, and uh, what is the next question, what will be the next idea from the evaluation we should focus it. I, I, I really want to focus on um, research question is a really important one. Even though research question is important, some novice researchers, when they writing their paper, they forgot to say what was the, my research question. Sometimes they say their motivation it is, is to say, but they didn't specify, so what is your research question, even though they try to introduce some of their product, their design. So research question is very important. From the evaluation, you can revise, you can rectify your research question more strong, more strong, more strong. Okay. So the triangulation is uh, very important uh, as I uh, focused on. And then uh, when we doing the evaluation, we have to check it out the uh, relevance uh, about with the goal and uh, our needs, our question, our requirement, and uh, the problem that I stated for the certain product or certain design. So again, uh, let's see this one. Um, I just want to focus on this diagram again because this is a very basic, basic one for your research. So once we identify the problem for the topic, for the product, for the design, for the research area, then we will do the something design using your pen and your pencil, and you can quickly draw something, and then maybe you can ask uh, to your friends like uh, just a quick and dirty. After then, uh, after you gathering something feedback, maybe you will redesign, redesign again, and. Maybe you can a little bit seriously, you can do some formative study with your friends, three or four. And you will also get some feedback, even though the feedback is a subjective one, it doesn't matter, but still that will be very helpful. After that, you redesign and you implement actually. And actually when you're doing the, your implementation, then you will conduct, you will decide to conduct, okay, this is time to doing some active study then you will do maybe more people, uh, depending on your study design, the number of participants will be different. This is the important topic, but I will talk, talk to you later. Anyway, you will be doing maybe 20 or 30, even 40 people, because this is a very serious one. So once you get, once you conducted your research and you can get very meaningful data, that's good. So you can go next level, which is uh, just a, uh, uh, reflect ourselves and making some discussion and making some conclusion and you can suggest uh, the next level, the future direction. However, if you can get a meaningful research, even though you did uh, uh, some active study with uh, 40 and 50 people, which was very, very hard to and it just makes you adjust it, but if you don't get, if you didn't get the uh, meaningful research, you can go back to the design part again. This is the research work, okay? So sometimes it looks very tedious, sometimes it's not so fancy, but finally when you get meaningful research, 
from your research topic with your research design and with your research evaluation and then publish the paper to the conference and all the experts agree, agree to your uh, research topic, your research method and your research evaluation and the research you are the one of the research researcher in the world. So that is the research uh, procedure. So uh, I just found that this one looks very interesting. Decided a framework to guide evaluation. So what is the determine the goal, the <coughs> evaluation address? This is really important and explore the specific question to be answered. I always focus on this one. So what is the, your research question? After that, you have to choose your evaluation method and technique. So we will talk about the statistics and then we will talk about the how you can gather in the data and then we can talk about after then how you can apply the certain statistical uh, tool to your research. And then identify the, the practical issues and then decide the how to deal with the ethical issues. Ethics is really important because we are working with the human subject. Uh, as far as I understand, the ethics, uh, the importance of ethics was come from the, the Second World War. Because during the time, there was many, many experiments that have been conducted with a human, but it was uh, so harsh and uh, very awful for the human being. So from the time, uh, the world researchers and the, the government focused on Ethics is very important. And nowadays, um, um, the United States, uh, we, when we do the research, then we always uh, submit IRB, our format, which is uh, related to ethics. I will handle this human being like this way, and then I will be very gently uh, handle them. Uh, and then my experiment is um, related to something else. So we have to specify everything very clearly because this study is not harmful for this person. And then you see also very strictly focus on the ethics. So you should prepare the ethics uh, in the future, maybe very near future, okay? And then evaluate, uh, interpret, and present the data for your final publication, good? So, <coughs> Our first step could be set uh, your goal and the research question always. So uh, you will have uh, some homework that will not be assessed, but you will make uh, some your research question for your interest in research area. <coughs> uh, for example, uh, have you used these this devices before? The left one is the weak controller, right? And then what is the, the mid one, do you know? PlayStation one, yeah, right, right. And then the, uh, the PlayStation track the, the, the controller's movement with the, the color, right? And then what is the, the right one? Can you see that the small one? This is uh, the Kinect, so capturing the tracking the body movement, right? So uh, the, this company invented uh, those controllers and the, this company maybe intended to these controllers much better to rather than just uh, using the, this kind of joystick for this kind of games, right? But how do you think? Is it easy to use? That, was that intuitive? What about the fatigue? And the, what about the advantage? Or what about the disadvantage? How do you think? Do you think, uh, for example, okay, so for example, the Kinect one, <coughs> how do you think if you're doing the game, but rather than just a controlling joystick, you, if you just uh, control your body, then do you think is it much, much fun rather than this one, much immersive? Then what about the fatigue? Why are you doing the maybe sport game? Why are you doing running? Actually, the Kinect may be required to run yourself. 
So maybe somehow there is a fun, but your plane and the duration will be very less, right? Because uh, so hard. So uh, make, make the user uh, be fatty. And then somehow, how do you think in a game like a Super Mario, then you can control the joystick and then you can move uh, the Mario's locomotion. You can go for the backward and doing jump and the crouching. But if you're doing the Kinect, then how you can do it? Do you already do it like that? So this is not e an efficient way, right? So every, every product has a, its own uh, flow and advantage or disadvantage. So we should uh, carefully think about it. So when you, uh, <coughs> sorry about that, when you find your research area and uh, maybe there is some interesting area, interesting topic, then when you find your research question, you should carefully think about it. What is uh, state of the art currently? For this phone, maybe it, let us assume this is the, the latest version of the phone in the world, then we should think about it. So what? So what is the advantage? What is the disadvantage? Uh, have you guys uh, used that small uh, devices before? This one? No? Okay. Uh, that is a called limb motion. And the limb motion is a, a basically similar with the Kinect. But the small device just focus on the, the hand movement. Yeah, hand movement, you know that. So I will, give me one second. Give some video. Okay, see that? In this case, uh, the user will in the head mount display and attach the limb motion in front over here. And because the head mount display uh, doesn't have a camera actually, so they can't see outside of the world. So the user attach the camera in front of the, the head mount display and using the limb motion, it seems like he can do this, he can have this kind of interface. Looks very cool, right? But my question is, what is the actual adv advantage of this technology and what is the actual disadvantage of the technology? And what can be, we can find uh, some research question from, for these devices. So, uh, I think it is a good time to have uh, some group discussion. So maybe uh, we, can, we can just uh, check out the uh, two, two groups. So these five and these five can have a discussion. But I assume maybe you can just focus on the finding research question and then find some advantage one only, not disadvantage one. And you guys, we find a research question and we find a uh, disadvantage one, okay? Uh, I think five minutes will be enough, okay? Let's do that. Okay. The picture was here. No, that is, uh, you can just uh, uh, hovering your hand over the device, doing like that, okay, yeah, don't touch, N do not touch anything, just uh, doing everything here, like that, all right? Right. Yeah, that is much better, yeah, yeah.
sorry? So uh, based on your discussion about the advanced or disadvantaged, then maybe you can find uh, something how we can improve the its feature or how we can still keep but reduce the its flow. So that is uh, maybe one way to find a good research question. Okay, uh, let's share the ideas for each graphs. So maybe, so how do you think about the advanced one? What is the advanced of the technology? Okay, why? Uh, 
Okay, then how can you press the button, something like that? It's not the button, so yeah. you need to do the press okay. button. Okay, 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 okay. And then, and then what, what is that, the other advantage? Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And then the other one, what is? Oh, we, we just have research questions, right? Okay. Yeah. So um, one is uh, what are the specific actions that we can perform, like when we zoom in, zoom out? Uh huh. Uh huh. That. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, the the limitation of the area that it can reach. So um, is is it a specific area that it can sensor? What is the area that? Right. Know? Right. That is yeah. a really good point. So actually, this device has a very short uh, the tracking range, yeah, yeah. which is a very uh, at best one meter and then this much angle. So if we doing something like that, actually in reality we know our hand is moving like that, yeah. but the motion uh, sensor can't capture this wide much. So maybe we can put some multiple motion sensor around it here. Then maybe the beauty is a. Uh, go down, so we have to solve that problem. What is this advantage? So for this advantage, we actually thought about like the very research portion are like the direct disadvantages to mm -hmm. this time. Like in, there's no significant signifier that you can show like uh, when you have it, right. or when you have to touch it, or right. when you need to actually right. move to it, or you don't know if you have touched it, right. the action has perf been performed or not. Right, right. Significant is missing. Right. You know, Right, yeah, right, 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 right. And the zoom in for it. And then obviously there are other like disadvantages of having it on mm -hmm. your body. Right, and right. Uh, and basically to buy this, there is another cost to it. And we have to buy the whole ecosystem around it. Right, so right, it. yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, so we think that's something that we can do. Yeah, so the yeah. question for that was about how we can trade them. Yeah, tactile feedback, right. Yeah, right. Right. That will be for another course, another course for us. Right, right, right. We can monitor this and basically yeah. do as opposed to it needs. Right, right. So this is a really important one. So when you <coughs> see some product, we want to still keep its uh, uh, benefit. We want to uh, still keep that on. But probably the product always have a flaws. So we wanted to cover the flow and then uh, even change the some features like that. So this product is uh, actually quite a good uh, product in, for virtual reality use or just uh, for interface wise. As she mentioned that one, when, while we eating something, then we don't want it to actually touch the, the, the product, but we can maybe do swapping like this one and then maybe we can type in, in the air. But somehow it makes some uh, fatigue yeah. over, over our hand. Mm -hmm. So that is a disadvantage. And the advantage of the product is its size. Actually, the size is very small. And then maybe we can um, make the size more smaller. So maybe very tiny one, so which is really good. Just to put um, uh, embedded on here. So maybe we can just, uh, with that extra device, we can just uh, detach the camera and the uh, embedded onto the my laptop, then we can easily use that uh, the devices. But still, fatigue and the air crash is not so good uh, until now. So that is a really good point. Uh, so I, I yeah. Because the the size of the device is uh, relatively small for compared to other tracking devices, and then when you open up the case the actual, actual hardware is much smaller rather than this one. So maybe we can think about it. Uh, for the future, for future use, we can just uh, test the, the cover and uh, embed the camera only 
onto the uh, laptop. This is just uh, one of our ideas. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There is a. There is a. Depend on the situation. If we focus on the VR headset, absolutely, there is a really great work. And then if I don't, if I don't want to use uh, that camera for the uh, virtual reality only, but I just want to use uh, for computer interface uh, purpose, then maybe we can uh, install. We can embed it onto the the machine here. Okay. So. Uh, actually, I wanted to have a more uh, discussion about this one, but we don't have uh, much time. So I just want to introduce this uh, joystick. Have you seen this one? So this is a come from HTC Vive headset, and this is the controller. But can you understand, and uh, can you tell me what is the advantage of this controller, maybe? For just in general, virtual reality, whatever, or just the normal interface. What would be the advantage of uh, using this type of uh, controller? Tracking. Tracking, yeah, easy to track our hand, right? So, which is a really great stuff. And then it has uh, multiple buttons, so maybe we can do much, uh, uh, we can manipulate many more things just uh, on the gesture rather than doing the gesture is uh, sometimes required to how we can press the button, how we can type it. But maybe we can use uh, something uh, buttons like that. And then this is the kind of a trackpad like, like uh, this one. So maybe we can slide in our thumbs around there. So maybe easily we can navigate the world or navigate the computer screen something. But what is the, what will be the disadvantage of the product? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. But I'm, I'm very curious because we have uh, some design people, but why don't you tell us about the design? Is it beauty? <laughs> it is, looks nice? <laughs> no, I don't think so, I don't think so, yeah. So when you think about some research topic, absolutely the shape also very important factor. The form factor is also very important and the function is very important. So we have to think about a very diverse perspective when you design your own research, when you evaluate your own research topic, okay? So we have to get some open mind. So I think this is a really good group to discuss each other because we have a very big different uh, background, academic background, so we can respect each other and they listen uh, what they say, then maybe you can find a really good research question for your research area. So uh, the research question uh, we have to think about it is the new interaction technique and good, uh, the new interface usable, uh, new interaction technique better than existing interaction technique like a state of art, is the new interaction technique faster than the existing one, how much faster than the new interaction technique is than an existing interaction technique, why? So we have to, uh, the first thing uh, when we make some research question, um, the first, firstly we can come up with a somehow vague and uh, somehow it's like a crowd, but uh, when you getting down and down, then you have to very specifically find, have to find the, your research question like this way. So objectively and um, more objective. So uh, maybe we still think about it, is the question answerable? So if there is a question but nobody can answer, then so what? <laughs> we can do that. So maybe you can, if we find, uh, find something statistical evidence from the question, which is really good. And then is that explanatory versus experimental research? We have to compare uh, our research topic categorized this side or this side. And then maybe uh, our research question can be depend on many different aspects, the topic, resource, context, scenario, and then current technology. Uh, and then the best bet, 
when you're preparing your research question and when you're preparing, you already entered to master course and then want to be a researcher, then the first thing and the, the last thing when you die, before you die, is a research review. Okay? So research review. Always doing research review. When you go, uh, when you going to this kind of a stuff, and the Google Scholar and the academic research is something, and the uh, ACM, ITV, VR, Springer, and then maybe have you seen this website, the research gate? Yeah, there is a kind of a SNS stuff, but we only share the, uh, the research stuff. We don't share our funny things, we don't share our experience, but only the research. So when you go to that site, then there are so many researchers already have done, have conducted. And then during that time, you should find your own way. For the, uh, if you want to save your time, save your effort, and if you really want to give a contribution to the community, you should do the serious research review. I believe Anthony and the Black still do that even though they are so expert in this area over the 20 and 30 years. So literature review is always important. Somehow it is very hard to see, do I have to really read a whole of a paper? And then when I reading the paper, it takes about at least seven days, at least 14 days. Yes, you do that. So when you're doing the uh, research review, uh, after that, we, uh, you should learn about how we can actually do the citation. Citation is really important because uh, research is a kind of a stepping rock. So uh, based on the already constructed stepping rock, you will put your stepping rock for other researcher or next generation. So citation is always important. And uh, otherwise, if we're, doing, if we're missing some citation on your publication, even it may some serious problem for your research career. This is true. So uh, have to be uh, uh, seriously check out the citation. Uh, there's a, uh, depends on the journal and it depends on the conference paper. It has uh, its own uh, citation format. But have you used uh, latex before when you're doing the documentation? Latex. Okay, then probably you are working on the word process when you make uh, some publication, right? That's fine, but uh, there is uh, some uh, software which is called Latex, which is a software to making document, uh, documentation. Uh, that is a uh, very uh, efficient software and the kind of a, a computer coding, but that is not serious one. So anybody and then Anybody can uh, work with the latex. So when you go to the website, uh, okay, I don't see it here, but overleaf, uh, let's see, start here. This one, and then this is uh, all my paper. It seems like a bit, uh, bit fuzzy, but that's fine. You can uh, check it out everything later. Okay, I wrote something in this site, in this plain text. And finally, we can get this software create this kind of PDF file. And this software will manage how we can uh, make a format for the reference papers for the citation, like this. So finally, you will get uh, this kind of stuff for your own research, okay? So latex.
Okay, uh, so <coughs> uh, we are finishing the, today's lecture today, and then this is uh, just a small assignment for you. I will, we will not assess for this assignment, but I believe uh, this kind of assignment will help you to develop your own research during this semester and for your master thesis. So uh, please write a statement of your HCI research topic of interest in including global research and the state of the art that is a literature review. It doesn't mean you have to so uh, read the paper just to catch some ideas and just to catch the trend for your uh, in your research topic research interesting in the world so maybe you can check it out uh, since at least 2010 yeah okay which is good and then problem statement research question it doesn't have to be uh, longer than two pages one page is enough it's okay so if we want to specify more than two pages will be limit including the reference and then upload to the learn website in pdf file then i will check it out and then i will give us some feedback for that okay uh, if you have a question then just let me know and then if you have any question again then send the email to me the s is not a capital but actually it doesn't matter and the website is a hit lab or this so all right, so uh, all done. And then because this is a kind of a formative or summative testing, so maybe I uh, waiting your feedback. Then maybe I can rectify my lecture for next time. So you have any feedback? Okay, yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, that's a good idea. So uh, when I prepare my lecture, then if I can, I'll bring them. Yeah, that is much better. Great, thanks. This semester, I'm going to teach uh, design and evaluation part, and uh, especially I'm focused on the evaluation, why Anthony focused on the design part. So uh, because this is uh, first lecture, I'm going to uh, quickly look through the introduction about the HCI and the uh, evaluation, okay? So uh, every Wednesday at uh, same time, I will teach the evaluation part, and then the assessment will be 50% for assignment and 50% for per report. For the assignment, maybe uh, we will have uh, some case and uh, presentation and the report. And uh, I didn't decide, I haven't decided yet for the project report, but maybe you will have uh, some mini project and then you will report your evaluation work on it, okay? So during this semester, I'm going to talk about the HCI and the evaluation, and then we will talk about uh, some human factors, the human factor, because uh, we receive so many information through our eyes, and then we listen the, the auditory one, and the we smell, and then testing, and the even we uh, touch and the feel something tactile feedback. So understanding the human factor is a really important one. Even though we are not talk about it deeply for that, but we will understand the overview of the human factor. So you will, uh, when you do your own thesis on your research, then you will consider about the human perception and the cognition and the human thinking, how our brain works, okay? And then we will talk about the, some user studies. So through the user study, we will learn about the, the concept of evaluation and how we can gather in the data collection and how we work with the human subject. Actually, human subject is very complicated. So is there any, Anyone who worked with a human subject for your own research or something, just a testing or something else? Well, I'm an American brain in the Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. So. <laughs> that is a very complicated, you know, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we have a all different background and then our uh, physical perspective, our height, our weight, and our ability, our experience is uh, all different. And sometimes it is very attractive 
uh, according to your, where you live and the ho how you uh, received uh, something and then our experience uh, regarding some using the devices or regarding some using the software, all these ones. So it is a very complicated one. However, uh, in HitLab and then for your thesis, you will someday we work with a human subject. So we should understand and we should learn how we can react, how we can working with the human subject, which is a really important um, things. And then we will talk about the user study methods like uh, observation, ethnograph, uh, case studies, interview, survey questionnaire, usability, and experiment study. Uh, even though we are not a uh, statistician, so we are not deeply looking at the math behind our uh, statistics, but we will learn about the, what statistics will be used on my thesis on my, as, a, as our own tool. So we will talk about the ANOVA, MANOVA, or a t-test, and what is the p-value, what is the f-value. So we will talk about that one. And then maybe my guess is uh, I will give us some tips uh, why we working on the, some statistics, okay? Um, most of the uh, materials in my slide uh, were made based on the, these books. So I highly recommend you read all of them, but if you don't have uh, much time, um, I recommend you to read uh, this one first, and this one first, and then this one. But if you don't have uh, much time, <laughs> again, then read those two guys, okay? Yeah. I think this is a really good time to introduce ourselves, including our academic background, so we can know each other, and then maybe I can also have uh, some cues to understand you guys and then uh, talk about the one thing you hope to get out of this class. So, start myself. Uh, my name is Song Choi Jung. I'm from South Korea, and uh, I went to United States, and uh, I came to Hitler as a postdoc. I joined here uh, last year, and then I worked on the virtual reality and the mixed reality and the human-computer interaction stuff. And my department uh, was uh, computer science, so maybe I can call myself computer scientist. And the skills, uh, I have experience to handle Unity uh, because Unity is uh, worked with uh, a C Sharp or JavaScript, so I have uh, experience on it. And then my previous background was uh, computer graphic uh, using OpenGL, so I have uh, some experience with uh, C++ and uh, OpenGL, and then uh, maybe Python, and a little bit R, and then um, Mathlab. Uh, actually, there is a nice software to handle the statistics, but some students uh, may, if they want to find uh, some uh, free software, then R will be the, the best option, I guess. But sometimes, we also need to have implement some uh, gen, uh, public software when we design our product and the uh, evaluation. So my choice, my my choice was um, Python. So that depends on your situation. So I'm not pushing you guys to use a Python, but anyway, I uh, twist a little bit Python. And then my statistics level is, uh, I'm not a statistician, so my level is not so much <laughs> those guys, but uh, I adopted some statistics tool on my publication and the published to the world, so maybe my statistics level is a reasonable level to the world. <laughs> okay, so one thing I hope to get out of this class is uh, I really want to uh, well deliver my knowledge to you guys. I really help you guys to uh, come up to overcome your master challenging. So uh, that is really what I want to. Thank you. 
That's great. Okay, great. Yeah. Hi, Rima. My name is Asif. I'm from Mumbai. Uh, so my background is in design. So I did a master's in interaction design. So I've worked for two years as a user experience designer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope that I could I can learn the Salesforce part of it. Sure. Part of it and uh, maybe any hands on some of the user environment aspects and KPIs and stuff like that. That's great. Great, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Nice plan, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Aishwarya. Uh, I have a management background. I specialize in marketing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have programming uh, background or experience, yep. but in my uh, master's before, I had a coding semester. Mm -hmm. So, but I didn't have, um, I was not knowing software. We used to write down stuff, yep. so uh, not software knowledge. Mm -hmm. Programming again, uh, I did an online course in Python, but I didn't have application knowledge. So mm -hmm. I That's great. So it seems like actually last time I, I read that, the post-it, and then I found that some of you guys have a little bit, yeah, just a little bit <laughs> fear about the programming languages, so that's fine. So um, that is a just depend on your research topic and then research area. 
So some, maybe some of you guys want to know more about the program language or have to know about the program language, but there is a really nice guy and great guys regarding the uh, program language, especially Adrian, he's uh, really great for doing this one. And the many PhD students uh, will be, uh, hopefully will be assigned to you guys. So they will help you to encourage you and then help to actually your program thing. So don't worry too much, okay? <coughs> All right, uh, so let's talk about the, the evaluation. Evaluation is a uh, uh, quite important one. Uh, last time I, okay, here's the, uh, you know that these guys, uh, I'm not only talking about the IT devices, Evaluation will be applied to all of the product, all of the design. But I just want to say about these guys, the Apple uh, AR Kit, Google AR Core, uh, Oculus Go, Magic Lab, and uh, Samsung AR Emoji, this software or this product was invented actually recently. So even though they, when they created those um, product and those software, they intended something, right? So you know what is the, the magic lip? The, the goggle? Yeah, that is a just AR, AR devices. When we wear the, the goggle, then you can see virtual object overlaying onto the real world. So that is a, their purpose. But actually, even though that is a one of our latest goggle, but still it has uh, something uh, flows, like uh, the field of view, the, the field of view, the, the range where we can see the outside is uh, still very narrow. So which is uh, one of the major flow for that one. And the Apple AR kit, it also still has a problem and the emoji looks like uh, really good. I'm, I don't think so, I'm not sure. <laughs> so all, all devices has a flow. And then they, uh, in their company side, they always doing the testing and testing and testing evaluation. So, uh, when we create some new device or software, whatever new product, we always consider about the evaluation. So I will talk about the, the cost-wise later. The evaluation, when we doing the evaluation, is uh, sensitively related to the money and time. So uh, even though the AR, this is the, so many companies worked on the AR and VR part. I'm not talking about the only the AR VR part. This is the only the very small portion of the world industry. But I just want to see that one. Many companies working on the AR VR part, even though there is a very small part, and they are doing lots of uh, evaluation, lots of uh, testing themselves. Because without the evaluation, actually the meaning is uh, nothing, right? So there is a reason why we want to focus on the evaluation. And then even though Anthony talked to you guys about the, the, the overview of the HCI, I just want to remind you again. Uh, the major thing about the HCI is the HCI is an interdisciplinary area, which means many different background people come to the HCI. I'd be surprised, you guys, yes, Always we have a really big uh, different background, we have it. When you go to the conference, then I met really different guys, even though we are focusing on the introduce our HCR research, our, our product, uh, our approach was very different because uh, some guys has uh, art, and some guys has a uh, mechanics, some guys has a uh, computer science, uh, science background, and some guys have uh, even education. Our perspective is very different depending on our discipline, oh, so which means our communication is really important when you talk to each other. Uh, when we go to the ITFVR, which is one of the major VR conference, or when you go to the CHI, one of the major HCI conference, uh, or VRFT, which is also one of the major uh, virtual reality conference, when you go to there, uh, there is not uh, computer scientists, uh, uh, mechanical engineers, and then designers, and then psychologists, and then edu uh, education people. We all gather there, and then we uh, we talk uh, 
same thing but with a different perspective on the same topic. So which is a very interesting one but very sensitive one. So uh, each discipline has a, their own tradition of their method, uh, which means uh, Interdisciplinary research area is uh, looks uh, very attractive, but very challenging. Uh, maybe we can apply the different methods. Some people uh, sh want to have a lab-based study, uh, versus some people want to have an ethnography, like a field study in the wild. And uh, some people maybe want to focus on the completion time which is a uh, numerical way. But some people may want to focus on the very subjective one. How do you feel? Was it good? Was it bad? But there is uh, no rational yet. And then some people want to focus on the uh, theory base. But some area doesn't have a theory, doesn't have a well-developed theory well uh, yet. For the reason, they want to focus on the practical way first and then on the practical uh, work will be added on it and added on it. Some people want to do this way. And then do you have uh, some knowledge about the journal and then conference paper? Okay, uh, there is uh, one way, uh, because we want to be a researcher, right? And then finally the researcher will be assessed by their paper. So at least you will have uh, your own thesis. Uh, from the University of Canterbury, right? But the other way to communicate with the other researcher is uh, always a paper. So there is a two way, journal paper and the conference paper. But journal and the conference has a bit different uh, feature. The biggest uh, difference was the reviewing cycle. The journal takes a very long time actually. Otherwise, conference, because conference will be held annually, so the review cycle is relatively short compared to the journal. So the feature is a bit uh, different, and then depend on the department. As far as I know, uh, education people or psychology people uh, prefer to publish their, uh, their publication to the journal. Otherwise, uh, on the other hand, the computer scientists want to publish their, uh, their paper to the conference. Uh, my guess is uh, because the computer uh, science area, computer technology changing very rapidly. For the reason, at the conference site, uh, computer scientists want to discuss each other and then discuss each other the, for the next idea and then they maybe get some results on their mind. So for the reason, some uh, com in the Department of uh, Computer Science, they regard the high conference paper uh, can be regarded as high, conf high uh, level of a journal. So there is a bit different tradition. So actually the fact is uh, that is uh, true even if all disciplines call themselves as a uh, HCI researcher. So, Design people absolutely call them HCI researcher, and some engineering people call them as a HCI researcher. Education people as a always a true. So triangulation is really important. Do you know what is a triangulation? The triangulation is a uh, HCI is a bit sensitive to the uh, human subject. So uh, and our background is. A very different, so our approach could be different for the one topic. So if we come up with the same result, uh, you come up with this, uh, one result with your own method, and you come up with the same result with different method, and you come up with the same, uh, you come up with the same result, but different method, then we can say that, okay, we can verify the, re the result can be uh, proved. This is a triangulation, so which is a really important one, okay? So communication is a really important. The first thing is that you have to understand uh, your own research method in your area first, and you should understand the research method in other disciplines area. 
the reason is uh, when you talk uh, each other at a conference or any other area, then we should understand. A after you, we understand their research method, then maybe we can aware of the sensitive part of their research method. Maybe some design people could uh, focus on its beauty or its uh, uh, how colorfully it represented. Uh, on the other hand, maybe engineer people just wanted to focus on the time consuming or was it fast, was it slow, was it uh, good enough to control something else, the numerical way. So we have to uh, understand each other and uh, talk uh, with a good manner, unless that is a very rude and uh, unless uh, you will, it is very hard to find a good research, okay? Uh, so you need to communicate your research in a way that others can understand. Also, uh, you should prepare something like a discussion. Why did you use method X instead of method Y or Z? When you go to the conference, uh, normally we will have a, about 20 minutes to 30 minutes for your presentation, including Q&A session. And then during the Q&A session, maybe this is the most frequently asked question. Why did you use that ANOVA rather than T-test? Why did you use that MANOVA rather than non-parametric method? So you should prepare why, why you choose that method with a good rationale, okay? So uh, last Monday, we have seen uh, this diagram, uh, and then I want to remind you this diagram again. Uh, once you decide that some your research topic, and maybe you will need to identify some problem or requirement or something factor which can be improved the certain performance, even though we don't know yet. After that, after you think about it, maybe you will start designing yourself with uh, your pen and then paper and uh, do some study design or design the each structure, something else. After that, you will start doing on your implementation. Because uh, mm, research-wise, maybe some implementation does not have to be perfect. There is no perfect solution, right? So maybe you can just quickly prototype in the implementing some devices, or even though some function does not work correctly, maybe sometimes it does not matter. If you just uh, uh, focus on your fast uh, research topic, research question. After that, absolutely, we will do a evaluation. After you find uh, some feedback from your evaluation, if you, uh, satisfy your research, then maybe you can just uh, finish it. But most of the time, we may return to the identify the, the research question again, and then uh, or redesign or implementing the prototype, so which is really important one. Once you're done, once you're done like a, a paper-wise, once you complete your paper to the journal, whatever conference, then maybe at the end, you will reflect yourself make uh, some conclusion, discussion, and then you can get some next letter, the future direction. So uh, when we doing the evaluation, we should think about the, so what will be evaluate? And what will be the, our expected outcome? And why we doing the evaluation at this time? And then who will evaluate? Or who will be evaluate? and uh, when the time and uh, the location and then uh, so how. So the first part of the evaluation is um, how we can effectively collect the data. So if we uh, think about it, if we want to evaluate the human gesture in virtual reality or just uh, in, uh, in a class in reality, then how we can uh, we, if we want to focus on the, we want to make uh, some taxonomy about the gesture for the teacher in a school. So let's say this is a kind of a, a negative one or something uh, feeling considering or thinking. Otherwise, this kind of a gesture is a bit open. So maybe I'm um, 
passive or maybe encouraging some students, something like this gesture is a very interesting topic in your mind. In the case, how we can gather their data? Using the video recording, which is good. Maybe taking photo, which is good. Um, maybe we can act, uh, have an interview with a teacher about their gesture, but somehow that is an inefficient way, my guess. So how we can, we can gather in the data is a really important one for the evaluation. So uh, we will evaluate the quality of the design or product in terms of user performance, usability, user experience, and so forth. So maybe we, uh, from the uh, evaluation, we can expect the outcome like um, how, uh, how, uh, how was it worked, uh, how much about the efficiency and was it easy, was it fast, was it slow, or did you find some notable things? Uh, whatever it is a negative one, whatever it is a positive one, uh, does the user like the product? So this will be the, our expected outcomes from the evaluation. And the other uh, good thing from the evaluation is uh, actually evaluation is not uh, end point, right? So that is the iteration. So once we do doing the evaluation, you will get some feedback from the uh, participant or from the, the data. So you can get some, uh, some important feature from the evaluation. Then uh, the, from using the evaluated uh, data, we can continue to investigate the, the future work. So this is a, uh, seems like a very, uh, easy one to understand, but when we actually doing our own research, this is always some of a missing part. So we should consider about the, what is the evaluation and what is the purpose of the evaluation. Even though you uh, submit your paper and uh, accept it to the uh, top conference, but still evaluation should be conducted, okay? So why? Uh, absolutely, uh, to validate our prototype and the solution against the goal, our requirement, and the, our problem statement. And then we want to refine our product uh, prototype and the design again and again. And then uh, again, we have to get lesson uh, about the user and the problem by evaluate uh, with a good rational uh, for the product design. The timing is a very important and interesting factor. I'm not sure who said uh, this wording, but you can fix it now on the drafting board with the easier, or you can fix it later on the construction site with a select hammer. Yeah, easy to understand, right? So. When you doing the your evaluation is very sensitive, sensitively related to your money and your time and your effort. Uh, there's a interesting uh, stories in South Korea. Uh, 1990, uh, the Samsung, the company, uh, developed the, the cell phone like that, that one. It called the S8 3000. And then it was awful because um, the major flu was it does not work. So that was a flu. So the president, <coughs> president uh, asked to their staff gathering all the, uh, all the devices on the ground and he threw the fire and he just burnt it. And he said that, okay, this is our lesson and we never do that, this one. After then, after then, uh, their next version, next generation cell phone was uh, very uh, popular in South Korea. I'm not sure what, what about the <laughs> to worldwide. Anyway, during the time they waste this much money, we guess their evaluation was not so good. And then their time to doing the evaluation was too late. So this much money, uh, 1990, <laughs> 1990, 1990. So 
that was a very interesting uh, history. So when we doing the, uh, the once the product has been developed, the, then the advantage of the thing is the rapid, we can do the rapid development and then the evaluation cost will be small, but uh, it will have a higher risk and then higher cost for rectifying the, uh, the problems like that, the history. Uh, otherwise, uh, when you're doing, uh, doing the design and the experiment, the advantage of that one is uh, we can find and rectify the problem more earlier, but uh, it still also has a higher portion of the cost in the evaluation. So that is a very in trade of relationship. So we should uh, carefully choose how much and how many times and when we will be doing the, our evaluation. Because um, uh, your master period is about one year, right? Even though there is uh, some extension, we, maybe you will think about, okay, I will complete my master during one year, right? Then you should carefully think about it when I was doing my evaluation. So maybe sometimes I will talk later, but sometimes you can ask your friend, can you just test it? I don't, I don't need uh, numerical data, just uh, want to know your feeling, so which is good. But when you do, uh, when you, the time comes up for your graduation, you have to do very serious evaluation. So during the time, you should prepare very well based on your uh, pilot study, based on your um, the pre-conducted study data to keep your time, keep your uh, money, keep your effort, okay? So, there is a three type of uh, testing matter method. We just uh, defined this one in terms of its time. So there is a three type of uh, uh, testing, the formative testing, summative testing, and the validation testing. Uh, let me check it out. Okay. Okay, okay uh, the formative testing is a uh, um, we can do, if we doing the evaluation very early stages, then we can say that that is a just a formative testing. Sometimes we can call it a uh, pilot testing. Because uh, uh, the formative testing uh, somehow uh, does not require to complete prototype or complete uh, evaluation technique, so its fidelity could be very low. However, we can still get nice feedback. So for example, when you just develop your, uh, your software or you design something, and then you can ask your friend and then uh, listen what is his feedback regarding this product. That is not objective one, that is a very subjective one. But somehow, if we listen same things from, from him and the same things from him and same things from him, triangulation, so maybe we can think about it, okay, maybe I should uh, revise this portion, this part. So I like the formative study. So mm, one of uh, our master student, uh, the student working on the cyber security in virtual reality, and then it takes a little bit time, but uh, very carefully uh, designed the, the student's study. And the student, uh, I believe, took uh, several times with 